The online hatred against Representative Ilhan Omar knows no bounds, and the people who spread it seem to not know what they're talking about. Take a look at the most recent attack against her spreading on social media. This time, not by a rando, but by a Republican state lawmaker. This is North Dakota State Senator Ole Larson, who posted a photo on his Facebook page falsely claiming that it depicted Democratic Representative Ilhan Omar holding a weapon at an Al Qaeda training camp. Larson, who's a Republican, also called Omar one of two Muslim women elected to Congress and elected terrorist in the post comments. So again, this is not just like your racist uncle, this is your racist state lawmaker. He was elected by his people to represent them and the way he has chosen to do that is by attacking another elected politician and trying to imply that they are a terrorist. And he doesn't just mean that metaphorically, which would be bad enough, but that they she literally trained at a terrorist camp. Now, here is the horrible thing about that. Uh, I'm gonna show you the photo so that when you see it, you will know to call it out. This is the photo that has been spread around. He is not the only person by any means to do it. That literally was posted by a different person than him, saying looks like Ilhan Omar graduated jihad school, which don't Google it, it's not a thing. Um, also, that photo does not at all show uh, what it actually, uh, actually is. And I'm gonna give you all the details, but understand that by the time this state lawmaker had spread this image, it had been going around for literally months, being debunked all the while. It was posted with things like, Ilhan Omar said she hates guns, Jihadi Omar at a training camp for terrorists. And you know what I did to see if there was something to this, to see if that's what the image actually showed? Um, well, I went to school, I went to college, I went to graduate school, and you learn some advanced investigative techniques to ascertain the veracity of a claim like this. Um, so I right clicked on the image and did search Google for this image, and do you know what came up? This, and you can see, all of this debunking of that image, it took two seconds. It took longer for me to screenshot that and post it in a production document. You see the image, you right click on it, search Google for the image, and you'll see whether it's true or not. And in this particular case, turns out it's not very difficult to prove that it's not true. Uh, do you know what that photo actually is when it was actually taken? Well, it was taken at a military training facility in Mogadishu, Somalia, back in February of 1978, which was an interesting time for a couple of reasons. One was that it marked an important date, four years before Ilhan Omar was even born. Which would make it difficult for her to be a full grown woman being trained in terrorist tactics in that photo. Uh, that photo has been available ever since then, it's been, it was used in a publication at that time. It's been online that entire time. That woman, by the way, not Ilhan Omar, also not a terrorist. She was a woman recruit of the Somali armor, uh, army, this is in the actual uh, caption of the photo. Checking her automatic weapon at a military training campus back in 1978. On the right is her instructor, her military instructor, not her terrorist instructor, by the way. What's interesting too is that that was not a terrorist camp. That was a Somali military recruit, and that photo was taken during the Agaden War while the Somali military was receiving support from the United States. So at that time, they were effectively one of our allies when it comes to that particular conflict. Regardless of what you think about the actual outcome of that conflict, that was our side at that point. And so again, if you actually cared about this, if you thought, What's a politician I hate? I hate Ted Cruz. If a photo came out of Ted Cruz being trained in some, I don't know, some Russian deep operative camp and he's holding a rocket launcher, I would search to see if it was real before I spread it. I would think, you know what? This confirms everything that I believe to be true in a way that is way too convenient. Let me do two seconds of research to find out if it is what I say it is. But they don't care to do that, whether it's a regular person putting this on Twitter or Facebook, or in fact, a state lawmaker. They will accuse a sitting representative of our Congress of being a trained foreign born terrorist but not care enough to actually check it. Now, Ilhan Omar knows that it's not true because again, she wasn't even born when the photo was taken. And she tweeted, this is pure propaganda designed to stir up hate and violence coming from a GOP state rep. Facebook's unwillingness to crack down on hate speech and misinformation is not just threatening my life, but our democracy, um, both of those. And I care about both of those uh, threats. Here's the thing, that photo was taken uh, back in 1978. Uh, it's been around, it's been on the internet ever since then. If it is being posted on Facebook today or last week or last month, it was being used for one purpose, not to educate people about the Agaden war. 
It's being used to attack Ilhan Omar. And if Mark Zuckerberg says that it is too much to ask for them to screen out that photo, knowing that it is only used in a false attack to incite violence against a sitting politician in the United States, I think we're allowed to have a massive problem with that. He is helping to facilitate, helping to spread misinformation that threatens the life of a woman of color in American politics. He's doing that because he makes money to do that, Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook makes money to spread this misinformation. That is why they won't fight against it. And as always, it's on us to stand with Ilhan, not on a particular policy here, but just on the continuation of her life under threat by random people, including elected Republican state lawmakers. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.